Okay, so where are we today, gentlemen? Do you want to do a Q&A first like we did last time, or? Yeah. Um, does somebody want to play? That third page, that was the homework, right? I worked on it. Okay, well, then you should play it. All right. One, two. So the one's starting in E flat, is that correct? Right? On somewhere? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were doing the tenths. Yes, let's go back to somewhere. One, two. Was that right? Sounds good to me. Okay, here we go. Hold on, wait, let me get the page up so everybody can see it. How's that sound? Sounds I can hear you. Can, can you guys hear him? Yep. Okay, bear with me. Yeah, it's, yeah good, yep. This might be um, eye glazing. That one's hard to grab. grab. That's the chord that Liam said he had trouble with. I have trouble with it too. Timing's a little off here. That's that chord again. I missed it. Wait, I'm sorry, what page, are you on page three? Starting at the very top? I thought I was. Uh, and I'm yeah. looking at the wrong chart. That's a good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I was like looking at the, the look of love and going, wait, that doesn't look right. Let's try it from the beginning, from the E with the G sharp. Sorry. Sorry, okay. Dave. Let's see if I can do it a little cleaner. I'll try and follow you. Remember, uh, remember. so if you're going to go super slow, though, David, what will help you, and maybe metronome work might be useful for you, is just to set a really solid... Right? One, two, one, and three, and so that you have a real solid sense of pulse. It might help your hands move more easily, but just set a super slow pulse. Okay. You know, so count it off before you go. One, two, three, four, right? I'm sorry, let's take it one more time and then I'll, I'll burn through it real quick. Painful, I know. Timing's a little off, but... That's this chord. I hate this chord. Just so you know, I I, I actually on that one. Yep, I literally hate this chord, and I it want you to know that when I play this tune, I do not play that voicing. The one yeah, up you here. You can play it. The you know there's the. So you you do the um the first three notes, and then you can get the uh, uh, what that. I I can't stand this chord. Uh, where is it on the chart? It's Where's the second it? to last on the very bottom. Oh yeah, thank you. So you're trying to get this F sharp. Right? But it's it, you can still get it with just going like a voicing we all know. Like I know Ted really wants that A sharp. And I love Ted dearly. And, but it's it's ridiculous. Yep. <laughs> So just, I think you know, it might be, 
right? No, I think so, I lost video. Sorry? I think I lost you guys. We're here, David. We still see you. Can you hear us? I can hear you, but I can't see. I think that might be my favorite chord in the whole arrangement. There's, I'm going to show you three, three other options for that particular chord, okay? So, and it kind of actually relates to the thing that Rudy was doing last week with the tenths. I realized something that maybe I, I haven't ever explained is the way I see chords is I see the intervallic relationships within the chord so that when I transpose it, it's easier for me to know where I'm going, right? So on this particular one, you've got the third in the bass, the seventh, the ninth, the root, and the 13th, right? But I can just as easily get this as to put the root in the bass. Right, so I play the root, the flat seventh, the third, the thirteenth, and the root. Can you guys see that? It's this one. It's the one we had in the blues. Uh, yeah. It's that same one. I feel like the pickups are really dark. Let me brighten that up a little. Um, right, so that's one option. Then the other option is just playing seven, nine, three, and one. So E natural, G sharp, um, A sharp, and F sharp. Can you guys see that? It, it, maybe if you stop screen sharing, yeah, it'll be. I'll go back to the other one. A little. <laughs> I'm getting another camera again, but that other one was just not working for me. So I'm playing this. So put uh, it's the 14th fret of the D string, the 13th fret of the G string, the 11th fret of the B string, and the 14th fret of the E string. Yeah. All I'm doing is trying to get that high. It's an F sharp with that high F sharp, right? So if I think of this as one, this is the root in the bottom, um, right? Or the third, which is Ted's chord. Ah. My fingers are too fat. That's part of the problem. And then um, if I put the seventh, And if you want a really fun one, which is really actually pretty easy, put your middle finger on the low E on the 12th fret, and then put your ring finger on the uh, thir uh, 13th fret of the A string, right? And then just bar the 14th fret, right? Um, actually, let's do this. Let's bar, let's make it even more fun. So. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your ring finger is on, sorry, don't make a rude gesture. Um, the low, the E on the 12th fret, and then I want you to bar the 13th fret with your ring finger. And then I want you to play the top two strings, the B and the E on the 14th fret with your pinky. You got that one? Yeah, I think so. I can't see your neck this this week. Yeah, I think so. So it's um, I'll I'll, I'll say the numbers out because I know people are working on. So it's twelve on the low E string, thirteen on the A, uh, on the D and on the G. So yeah, and then bar fourteen with your pinky. It's a great okay. part literally all the time. What what are you what is that? What do you think of that? The ninth chord with the flat seven in the bass. It's got a great sound, especially if you're playing like um like uh in a blues. Right? It's like a more of a horn sound.
All right. I remember from last week, it said page, somebody said, I think you said page three. Everybody learn page three and do it, but I might be on the wrong arrangement. No, no. We're, 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 you're, you're correct. I just, there was also requests for other material. And I think we're just kind of, again, this is, we're get, it's not formal lessons. We're just yeah. hanging. And to button up somewhere over the rainbow. Otherwise we spend a year on this thing. You yeah, know? yeah. So, but here, Dave, this also might help you. Um, Someday, some bishop pop star. You're really going for that. Someday, I wish upon a star. Right? You want to make that sense of melody because that's the lyric, right? The person, yeah. the person singing this would be going. Someday, we, um, So I would work, I would work really hard on getting some. And then go back, right? So you're getting that melody down. And I think that part of the reason that you, there's two things that I think are happening about stumbling that I know about stumbling. One is it's still too fast for you. Okay. Your hands. And I think you might be gripping a little hard trying to, to get it to happen. Yeah. So slowing down even further and really thinking about what the melody is there. Someday I'll wish upon and get a very fluid sense because my hands aren't happening at the moment either for it. And it's I'd still just sit here and go. And that heart, that transition to get to this. I might bail on this low E. I might bail on this low E just to get that transition. So go from here. Just to get, um, it's weird. Yeah, that one stumbled. Yeah, I stumble yeah. up with that one too. And then getting this change. can do there's a lot of tricks to getting it so that it stays under your fingers like arpeggiate everything right I try and do more and more as I'm getting it under my fingers, David, is I try and relax more. So then what I'll do is put a little less pressure. Right? And try and connect the line. And again, for you, I would say slow is really, really good. I can't make that. I can't make that. Not today. I'd have to sit with work with it. the notation david okay just make make the make the melody happen make, make the song happen the way your ears are hearing it and keep it slow and try and connect the ideas i i really like it you know what rudy said he said last week that first chord that e it was a little challenging for you yeah i kind of proved that as well i mean it's a pretty easy chord but getting that next mm -hmm. Those X's, yeah, that's tough. And then Liam, yeah, that B7. I've never played that shape before. You might have. You just, it's, you might have played it in a different register. We kind of talked a little bit about that. You might have. So that's me. I'll work. That's kind of where I'm at. So I'll, uh, I'll keep going and hopefully I can. No, no, we're gonna go through the rest. I think. Um, did anybody else want to take a shot at that section? Yeah, give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Sure, but I'm... You guys hear okay? I'll go first, Rudy, and I'll... Okay. Is mine good? It's pretty distorted. I don't know what's... Did uh, mine sound like that? No. Okay. How's that? Better. Uh, maybe bring the gain a little down a little more and you'll be good. Much better. 
better. Cool. sharp yeah, diminished man. seven is a lot easier than you're making it on your shelf yeah it's you just know? a little too much wine last time my fingers are a little stiff <laughs> yeah but go do play the e like this with the three fingers so you're setting up for it right so you're going and then so i'm actually doing kind of like kind, kind of like what you what you're talking about how ted would um hit two strings with one finger yeah i'm doing three with two fingers to get that well, I, if I were doing this, I would go, and then I would switch. Um, so I go from, so I bar for the E, and then I would drop. It's a good little finger exercise. So I'm just barring with my third finger to get the E, and then I'm lifting my finger up to get the two notes that are still the same, and just moving my middle finger down one half step. You might be looking at a different measure. See, I, I think that the way I would generally do this to make it easier on myself is I would probably play with all three fingers. Mm -hmm. Right? So you got your... Right? It's a very small move. Mm -hmm. There's a million ways you can choose to do this. You know, again, my fingers are fat. And so sometimes I have to make choices about what I'm going to do to set up to get from one to the next. So, um, but I think, again, I think metronome work for you guys would be really a really good choice because um, it'll force you to try and relax. And at the same time, um, let's see if I can make this happen here. And I'm so bad about playing with the metronome. I know I, I should play with it, you know, every time I pick up a guitar, but. Well, I don't, I don't know about that, but, you know, I think, I think there's no, I don't go with you should or shouldn't or especially anything that makes you feel bad if you're not, you know. Um, I, I lean towards this, a, a metronome would set me up with, you know. And then as I'm working it, my hands can see where I'm having problems shifting and I can slow it down more and get so I can make those transitions. Right? Like, I mean, you can see, like, I struggle with the same sort of thing. It's like, and then getting to here, um, which I really don't like. So I would just sit with a metronome and try and get that as fluid as I could. And still playing the metronome. And again, this one, remember, this is not that big a move. So you've got. Can you roll your pinky to make that? I do. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. And if you take it to tempo, so yeah. Uh. Right? You can, you can. I don't want you, again, like I said, in general, I would lean more towards working with this 
And on this chart, by the way, this is how Ted would start. So if you think about it, Ted's, um, I think he's looking at this in, in a different key, yeah, in A flat. And he's looking at, but he's looking at the relationships of the melodies to the basic harmonic structure of the tune, right? And then he builds his arrangements from there. I think this is the, probably my guess is the key that, um, that she sings it in in the movie would be my guess, right? And so he's looking at that and then going, well, these are the harmonic structures and well, how do I move it? But again, when you're not so worried about time, you know, then you can get into a more fluid thing. If you're worried about playing it in time, then, um, well, then you've got to really concentrate on uh, slowing things down to the point where the transitions are not that difficult. You know, and for me, the, the one that's the most difficult is this one. And I don't know why. Just the way my hands are. So I, I'm pretty certain when I worked on this tune, I spent a lot of time on those particular things. And I think I mentioned this last week when we talked about like the Tommy Emanuel thing about practicing, where he says, you know, this kind of stuff that's really not particularly musical sounding, you do alone in a room where there's no one looking or listening, right? And you work it until you get your hands fairly relaxed and doing it. Um, who, uh, Liam, you want to take a shot at the last page, page four? Uh, I'm not as prepared for page four. <laughs> I was going to get, I was getting ready to do the bridge bit again. Uh, okay. Um... I like this. Wow, I got to work. I'm in the wrong key. Be good if I was in the right key. Uh, that's a great line. So that's just getting... That's a double stop for sure, David. That G sharp minor. Where are we? Are we twin? Yeah, okay. Is definitely with one finger. I can guarantee that. Which one? It's the third chord on page four. Six. Twins. Yes, he's doing, I. Yeah. He's doing a fifth finger. I can almost guarantee that. So. I, I just started page four last night, and those first two chords have to use, well not have to but it would behoove you to use a double stop yeah yeah i mean but the reason i say that is because more than likely ted's using the side of his first finger to get that melody note so he's going and then using the side of the first finger to get this note while holding the chord so it's literally this part of my knuckle coming down on that note I'll go back to the I'll go back to the other screen. Hold on. Okay, so on that G sharp, um, uh, where are we? So let's just grab that first. So it's that's those two notes, right? Yep, exactly. Right, and then to get that note, can you see what I'm doing? I'm folding my knuckle down on that. So it's, this is called the fifth finger. It's, a, I think it's, it's a George Van Epps technique finger. where you're actually using, it's, it's also called diagonal barring, like where you're, like I'm actually playing these three notes, but I'm doing it by barring with the side of my finger. I don't know if you can hear, I'm trying to see. So normally you would play this minor triad like that, right? And the most basic way of showing you, so I'm playing here, I'll, I'll make it in an easier key. Uh, e minor, right? That's E minor. So I'm playing E, G, and B. Everybody can see that? Liam, you have a quizzical look on your face. It's okay, I didn't realize you were changing key, so with you now. So E, G, B, E minor. And all I'm doing is I'm playing the E with my middle finger, the G with my first finger, and then I'm putting the side of my finger on the B. I don't know how to... 
Yeah, I do not have that one in the arsenal. It's just a way of showing how to do diagonal barring. It's not particularly a way of something I would do. I would normally almost always play G E minor like this. But diagonal barring in this particular case with the G sharp chord. It's, I can still hold all these notes and get that B natural. Does that make sense, Liam, or have I, got, have I lost you? Yeah, you've really lost me. I'm, I've got poor internet, but I'm hearing you. I'm with you. You're fine. Okay. This is a great move down. The way to get to that G sharp seven chord so that it's not uncomfortable for your hand is to think of it as this. This is a chord we use all the time. We've been using this since the first blues. And all I'm doing is putting the fifth in the bass instead of the root. So remember earlier I said the way I remember things is, is what's the interval relationship? So if we go back to that exercise with the tenths that we were doing the other day, like there was an E chord. You guys remember that? Just a straight E chord. It was the root, the fifth, and the third. Right? So I think of this as what are my available low and high intervals? So no matter what key I'm in, I know it's the root and the third. So if I'm in A, or if I'm in D, or if I'm in G, or if I'm in C, right? It doesn't matter to me. And I know that that particular voicing is that the low voice is the root and the high voice is the third. So I can move it around anywhere I want because I can just know, oh, I know that. Now, you might not have a sense of harmony that's that quick, but that's something you get used to. But if I go to the next voicing of that, so I now know the third is in the bass and the fifth is in the in the high in the high point. So now so now I've got this memorized in all 12 keys. Because I know it's I'm not thinking about what the notes of the chord are or the shape is. I'm going that interval, that that tenth, you know, G sharp to B with the root in the middle. Right? Is how I can remember that particular shape. Almost all chords work this way, guys. Like, it's really cool. Once you start seeing things um, that look odd to you, look for where the actual shape is in terms of what's happening. Like on that G sharp chord, all that's happening is, is his, he's put the fifth in the bass instead of the root. Am I going too fast? No, I think... So I that that e you were talking about and I, and I don't know whether the way I think about this hinders me I when I think about that I think of I call that just the D shape because it's like that it's like that or like that if you're doing d7 or what it's a, it's like it's the same as just the, as you say the very first chord any of us ever learned I think of that I think of that as a D shape so if I'm playing that that's D or G or whatever I think of it as the D shape rather than thinking the root and then the fifth and then the third. But you are thinking <laughs> And that's me. But, you uh, are but yeah, I, I am thinking I'm thinking the root because I know whenever my, whenever my first finger goes, that tells me what I'm playing because it's right, the root. Because but yeah, that open D is what, open D. Yeah. Right. It's open D, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. What I tend to do is think I don't tend to play through that. One of the things I've been trying to do off the back of these sessions as well is I'm one of those guitarists that's played for thirty years. I never really practice. I just noodle. I just pick the guitar up every day and I'll play around with it. But I don't have a practice routine. And that's what I think stops me getting to the next level. Because superficially, I can play the guitar. So I think I don't do a practice, but I know that that's creating a big block for me. And that's mm. part of what I'm trying to take out of that. 
I would say noodling is creating the block, not not practicing. There's a difference. I don't practice uh, at all, sense. guys. I don't practice. I work to play, right? But I don't actually sit down with a metronome and you know do the. I, I don't do that because I have never played a gig uh, in 50 years where at any point in the tune, I needed to be able to play. <laughs> Although there is a Mozart piece that I, I, I play. Uh... Right. And there's some things where there's a lot of scale. In... Right, that kind of stuff. But I don't do that. I don't practice. If I'm sitting down to practice, yeah. Liam, I'm sitting down to play. The thing is, is I won't, if I'm actually working on something, I won't stop until I've got the whole thing as a complete thing. And what happens with a lot of musicians is noodling yeah. feels good, right? Because it's like, you know, it's nonlinear and you're kind of like, oh, this fragment's cool. And oh, this fragment's cool. And this fragment's cool. And so what happens is when you go out to play, you, you play in fragments, you know, it's not, it's not always a cohesive yeah. thing, right? So if you, if you shift that yeah. to being more of a, you know, I'm going to work on uh, this song, whatever it is. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you don't stop. Oh, I've got the first line. Yay. No, you got you go all the way through the tune yeah. because then that becomes part of your linguistic musical vocabulary. And I don't I don't yeah. I don't necessarily I mean, yes, practicing has a tremendous value. Like like I showed you guys at the beginning today I'm working on legato technique and you have to have a lot of distortion and and it hurts my hands and but I want to see how that sounds on my guitar. Doesn't mean I'll ever use it. More than likely not. But yeah. you know, I'll work with that for today to see what kind of music I can make with it. And I might be an anomaly, Liam, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. For you, you might need to sit and practice two hours a day. But I, everybody's got to find their own way through it. You know, but don't be hard on yourself because just I just always advocate against noodling. Don't don't noodle. Like the first I'm thing. I'm the same, Liam. Story, I did see some guy, and he's you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know any song in the world where that would be useful. Now, if he was, if he was playing. playing a tune right yeah yeah and then that's that's somebody it's like if you think of it as a language it would be like me coming up to you and going hey liam how are you man what's going on what's it and it's like you're gonna look at me like i'm i've got tourette syndrome <laughs> right yeah yeah right so no, so don't worry about the don't worry about the routine as much as it is is how you shift your focus you know if you want yeah. to play music then play music Right. And the more you slow things down and, yeah. and kind of, I don't know, this is just my opinion, but the more you break things down and the more relaxed you can get with it and the more familiar you can get with it, the more you can express yourself when you're playing with other people and you'll find yeah. these kinds of things coming up. Yeah, absolutely. That was useful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That sidebar. Um, uh, G sharp. This is a great chord. I I would lean towards that, although you could do um, because that's that crazy voicing that we worked on a while back. 
third in the bass. Right? And yeah, if you want to get really weird with it. That's a great chord. So that's E7 with a flat 9 and a sharp 11. If it hurts your hand, don't do it, okay? <laughs> Rudy's like, nah, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? Yeah. That's awesome. I use this one a lot. It just feels good. It's got a nice that you know the ninth and the fifth is on the top. They sit well. Also make this minor just move your uh, ring finger down a half step which is a really nice E minor 9 chord so you can see like I listen for the sound and then I look for what I can do with it does that make sense okay so um, where were we the E7 uh, uh, another line here. Another line here. And then you're trying to get to. So this is actually interesting. So you're trying to actually get. So I would probably use my my ring finger and my uh, my pinky and my ring finger because I want to slide down to get that note. Right, so it's a great chord. This is my favorite chord in the track. That's a, that's, it is this chord, the one that we keep coming back to, this 13th chord, and all he's doing is putting the flat ninth in the bass. Can you see it, Liam? I think your screen may be frozen for me. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it. You, know, first. you can see it? Yeah, your screen's been locking up a bit today. It is a cool chord. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. That's super easy. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> again, because I think uh i don't think this is worth leaving i like coming back to this i don't want to spend the whole time looking at this um i think what i'd like to do today if we can take the last 15 minutes or so to look at more <clears throat> fun approaches to chords like so that it's not so weighted like i the sense for me is that you know these are becoming projects for everybody and the idea of this group was to talk about ted's works as, as well and I have no problem like teaching. I don't, I, I like it. I like helping you guys. But I, I also think this should be fun, right? Like where, where it's not just like this, oh my God, I've got to get this arrangement done. And you know, what? whoa, if, if I don't, I do. And um, so what I'd like to do if we could is um, let's do a quick Q and A about where you guys are looking at chords and utilizing them for fun and some things that you guys are working on and we can we can all kind of contribute to each other and say what you know where we are picking a tune that you know or an idea that you're working on or something that may be more fun as opposed to project driven that we're doing because we got about 15 more minutes okay i mean for me a lot of these 
arrangements that we've been working through, I mean, a lot of these are new shapes for me. So I'm just enjoying learning those and training my hands, probably why I look like a robot, you know, but um, when I'm going through these, I, I don't really know how to break the chord down. Oh, this is the root, this is the third, this is the fifth, this is the ninth. I mean, yeah, I could, it would take me a minute, um, but I don't have a quick way of seeing where the bass is, and where the melody is, as it's moving through the arrangement. Okay. That's pretty important. Right? Yeah. I That's think like I, you guys think, how, could, well, how do you think we could help him to see that better? I, for me, I, I, I do that. I think I said this last week. I you might already be familiar, you will already be familiar with it, you know, in the old, the chords you learn at school, the very first G, E, C, D, and A, and E, you'll probably know where the bass is and all of them, relating everything to them, even that chord that we can, that one that I think, was it, was it this, which is, which is, a, it was a B7, that's, that's just, G for me, I just see that as G or G, you know, G seven, like it, which you would never actually play it like that. You would, you're very unlikely to ever do a bar chord with a G seven shape. Up. That's what I see that as. So I've fallen into the trap well, of every shape, no matter how convoluted. I'm looking at every shape as right. What is it? Is it close to? Is it E A G C or D? This is the cage thing. And I never know whether or not that is a hindrance to me or a help. It feels like it's a help, but I wonder whether it's helped me get soft and it's blocking me from getting elsewhere. How? how let's. That's just the way I. Quick question for everybody because I actually probably never asked this. I mean, okay, I don't see harmony as rules and regulations, and I see the systems of organization. So for me, it's very natural to look at the neck and go, "Oh, I'm playing the third and the, you know." You know. I'm seeing and hearing that because what I, I'm used to training myself is to hear that that's a major third. And so in the key of E, a major third is E to G sharp. I'm just, I've trained myself E to G natural, E to, e to F sharp. Right? And my ear, you know, has an understanding of those intervals and relationships. But, but if you guys are not, we should probably talk. There, in the beginning of chord chemistry, there's a lot of information for you guys that you can start with, but I think it's really important to start, A, a seeing the notes on the neck, like really clearly. Like, you know, being able to, I don't do tablature, so I don't, I don't know how to help guys with that, but I do know how to point to, like if I say to you a chord and I say, you know, these are the notes. I've been trying to do more, you know, you know, six on the A string, seven on the D string, six on the G string, and seven on the, you know, I, I just don't think that way. Like my brain immediately goes, um, you know, G sharp A, C sharp F sharp. Like I, I just, like it's there. And it's also the sound, right? I can hear that as, C, as D sharp, T sharp minor seven flat five. Or I can hear that as B7. Or... Right? So my ear, depending on context, and it also helps when you figure songs out. Right? Because your ears are going to be more attuned to like what chord progressions are and what they sound like. So David, maybe what we should do is you and I should do a separate thing and I can just give you some basics in harmony. Yeah. Like let's, let's you, you know, I'm local. Just call me. We'll, we'll set up a time and we'll do a thing where we talk about basic harmony and how to look at things. Harmony, is, harmony isn't intimidating. It's the way it works. It's, you know, it's like, you know, it's the same for us for language. Like we're not thinking about grammar or spelling or vocabulary. It's just we speak. But harmony is the same thing. It's like, you know, these intervals make a major scale. These intervals make a major triad. These, But these intervals means these relationships, right? So it's a sonic relationship. And so knowing on a B7 chord or a B13 chord, you know, what these interval relationships are, 
are important. Not, not, there's a lot of amazing players, George Benson, Borelli Legrand, these guys, they don't care. They just know what it sounds like. Then they play. But they have amazing ears and they really relate to, to that sound, right? So, don't, you know, let's work on getting you being more comfortable with that. It'll probably help with the arrangements. Because then it's not so much shapes as it is, you know, this is the, because they're all melodies, right? You guys dig that, right? Like if you were to isolate a single line, any single line and follow it through the arrangement, it's a melody. It's a very good melody. That's why it works. That's why these chord sequencing work is because he's voice leading all of these chords and melodies and you can you can just pick one line and follow it through and then analyze that against the names of the chords. Like David, let, let me ask you a question. If you look at page 3, right? Yep. Just that first chord that you don't know, the E chord. Do you know what's happening there? Like what what why it's an E chord? Uh, yeah, well, that E is on the B string. That's the root, fifth fret. The third is on the high E string. That's an F sharp. That G string is the fifth? Yep. And then in the bass is a is the three. Right. I'm not quite sure. You said something about an F sharp. I don't, there's no F sharp in there, so I'm not sure what, you, what you're seeing. G sharp. I'm, I'm sorry, G sharp. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're seeing that that's G sharp, B, e, B, and G sharp. Yeah. Right? So if you just play any combination of those two notes. Right? There's different relationships that are happening between all of those intervals, right? But start moving that around so that you're, it's like, I did was I went E, then I went to A, and then E, and then that reminds me of Sound of Music? Uh, I don't know. It's at the end of uh, uh, Doe a Deer, a Female Deer. They sing this refrain. It goes, ba, da, da, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 oh my God, that's so high. <laughs> it's, I'm not putting this video out now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> And you can, I would find how to harmonize that. And that's where chord playing leads to that's fun, right? Like something yeah. sparks your imagination of like that particular tune. How do I play chords that make that work? And then what you hear, like I start to hear, I go, okay, so I went. And I know I need to get this. Note. So that's an E or. Right, because I'll look for chords that. So I get more fun out of just playing that. What am I doing here? That's kind of interesting. So. Right? And that's how my ears start doing it. But all those have energetic colors. I need to get from that back to the... Right? And that leads me back to the one. And then you experiment, right? And that all those sounds 
become part of your ear. But the way you're going to start, David, is... listening but 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 that's where that's where fun came with playing now that kind of noodling liam i'm all in yeah. favor of. yeah right but i'm i'm thinking time or color or melodies yeah and, and that that is the type of noodling most of the time i do going back to your point that first d chord there for me that that's a i i, I think that's a, it's like a c it's like a it's like a C bar chord. That's what that is. But you you don't you're not using you don't you're not playing the the E on the seventh on the the D the A string. That so it's like an E and uh, so it's like a C shape. And that's what I tried to do when I when if if you, when I first came across Ted's books that was about twenty years ago and they just went right over my head because I was just a blues person. But then when I started to do the Martin Taylor stuff and learn arrangements and stuff that got my finger and then when i came back to ted's stuff i was like oh that now makes sense i now see what he's doing it just didn't mean anything to me when when all i knew was pentatonic scales and stuff like that so um but yeah that's the type of noodling i do i just want to make sure that i'm progressing at the same time i think noodling with time and noodling with purpose and then moving from noodling to playing complete pieces of music and not stopping until you actually have that complete piece of music Tunes. You know, it is is um it's really important. This um I got interviewed the other day. There was a I was actually gonna apply. There's this thing called the Master Class Intensive. It keeps showing up in my Facebook feed. It's like all these really good guitar players who are doing this three month thing. So I applied and the girl and the girl was like asking me, you know, do you know this? Do you know that? Do you know this? Do you know that? And I kept saying, you know, you had to rate it on a scale of five what you knew. And she was so nice and she was so kind. And I kind of felt douchey because I was going five, 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 five. And then at one point she asked me something. She said, what's the fifth mode? What's the fifth mode of a harmonic minor scale? And I said, well, I don't know what you call it, but it's a dominant seven flat nine chord with a sharp nine available to you. Because I said, you know, you've got this, this, and this. And she goes, oh, we call that a Phrygian flat nine. I said, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an organizational system, right? It's it's not yeah. it's there's no rule. I I can guarantee you if you're soloing or if you're playing or you're writing an arrangement that you're not thinking, you know, this is what that is. I'm it, it's helpful to know it, David. It's like it's helpful to know that I can these are the colors. Like it's it's for me it's helpful to know that I have um let's see. Like on a B13 chord back up a little bit I'm tired of not being able to sing. so I've got all these colors very natural sounding right and then if I want more tension or if I really want tension stupid uh... tension and release but they're all the same they're all the same thing I mean I can go really stupid and go um... all I did was I played but I played it with melody instead of chord. <laughs> and then there's like being really stupid, like. And that's, I just don't give a damn. <laughs> I, just, I just don't give a damn, right? It's like, um, you can pretty much get away with anything if you keep in time and find a target to resolve to. You know, uh, there's a tune Mike Stern plays um, Friday night at the Cadillac Ranch, and it's uh... I mean, it's, 
it's a blues, but it's a chromatic chord per beat. And, you know, Bill Evans, when he plays sax holes on it, is making the changes. Like he's actually playing all of those chords. And I took a lesson with Mike and I said, I have no idea like what I'm supposed to do. And he goes, well, I just play, he said, I just play blues and let the chords move underneath me. And it sounds really hip, which is not really true because Mike is way too hip and he's, he's able to make those changes. And then he showed me how to practice, like being able to play over those kind of complex things. It's not the way I would play. I don't have that kind of instinct, right? But knowing, David, knowing that, you know, what this is and why, and knowing from my ear that needs to go to, right? I need that. This is leading to, then you start to hear that in your head more and it becomes more intrinsically part of how you play but i know but i know why that's doing that i'm not thinking it but i had to you had to learn it does that, does that make sense yeah and you know it, it is happening if i'm as i'm learning the arrangements i might not know where the colors are and you know what's happening in the bass or the melody but i'm memorizing it i'm learning it and then i can always continue to cycle back and revisit and be like oh shit, yeah that one chord that is moving so it it is happening but like a conscious decision to like grab a chord and find where each interval is no i haven't spent any time doing that what about taking like a simple melody and putting chords to it like let's um Let's do an assignment for next week. Let's see how creative everybody can get with Mary Had a Little Lamb. Like, let's not do, a we can do, let's just keep working on Over the Rainbow. Oh, hey, not the Stevie Ray verse. Yeah, let's hold off on oh, let's not Stevie Ray. Over the Rainbow. Yeah. Sorry, Liam, I, I didn't hear you. I'm saying not the Stevie Ray version. The proper oh, Mary Had come a Little Lamb. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do that if you want, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That'd be fun to. No, in fact, Liam, you have to figure this out a Stevie version of "Mary Had a Little Lamb." <laughs> that's that's okay, your assignment. Enough. For I'll the, do that that's for your next I will really look forward to seeing that, and you can pick your key. I don't care any key you want. Okay, but but the thing is, is Steve... you take a melody like. start to explore that was an E right the melody starts on the third of the key so that's a hint and then you so whatever key you end up starting this in that melody that... so I've got more like of a Scottish vibe there uh, bagpipes yep a drawing There's that Scottish, wouldn't you say? Drone, yeah, that's it needs that low drone note. That's what you need for Scottish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, George Benson did a great version of Danny Boy where he made it sound like a bagpipe. Yeah. It's, it's a very good song, Danny Boy. It's a great. I used to do a Martin, very basic Martin Taylor version of Danny Boy. There's lots of it's a lovely melody. So I haven't heard the George Benson one though. I'm I, going to try I, and try I've, that I've been told though that when you go to Scotland, that that's like playing Stairway to Heaven. You're not supposed to play Danny Boy. Uh, if you, uh, yeah, if you go to certain folk groups, don't play Danny Boy. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like stairway in a guitar shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. I will never do that. <laughs> um, but but knowing that, and then trying having fun. I'm just playing two notes. I like that. Because this stuff is supposed to be fun, guys. I don't, I don't want you feeling burdened by, you know, like there's some pressure that we have to get through the arrangement by next week or it's like a book club. So a traditional book club is you read the book and talk about it, right? 
we're just looking at arrangements and talking about it. And then I kind of go off and riff and say, look, this is a cool idea. And this is a cool idea. And my hands can't make this unless I practice it. Right. It's not, I'm not saying anything different than you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all saying the same things. Some of this is hard. Some of this is challenging. Um, all I want to do is have Ted stuff be vital for you guys. It's not intended as an intellectual exercise. It's to broaden your understanding of how the instrument works and then how you can use it. You know? And so, uh, and then, you know, and again, for me, I, I just like to be able to play more color and different approaches to parts on guitar. And, you know, but if someone's playing Mustang Sally and I have to, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to reach for, you know, Mustang Sally. Just go for it. I don't want to think. Where's my beer? So, you know, don't don't let this stuff intimidate you, please. It's really important that you don't. It's um it's again if we're a true form to a book club, we just talk to each other. Yeah, that, that from my point of view, that's what I find really useful, John, because obviously there isn't much live music at the moment anyway because of COVID, but even whenever I do attend live music, no disrespect to the other players, but it'll just be blues or just a jam and it's straightforward. And if if I was to say, you know, how do you do deal with this Ted chord shape, they would just say that's too esoteric for them. And so I, I find this really useful because I don't really have any other outlets to, to talk about this type of stuff. So from my point of view, I'm eternally grateful for it. It's very good. Uh, I like hanging with you guys. Do you know who Denny Chang is? Do you watch any of his stuff? Don't recognize that name, no. Wow, you should, you'll really love this guy. So Denny Chang owns a music, uh, online music thing called DC Music. Oh, I know DC Music though. All oh, right, I know that, that's, yeah. That's uh -huh. Denny Chang. He's a really right. super amazing, super sweet, excellent educator and an amazing player. And he does these extensive, they're free online, extensive video breakdowns of like how gypsy picking works, how gypsy rhythm works, how um, soloing works. Uh, he's he's done classes with Borelli, with Stockolo. He's, he's done stuff with Stockolo. I'm sure there's, it's sure that I've found videos online that are DC, but it's, DC it's music, the I, I highly yeah. recommend DC music. Like the Borelli lessons are unbelievable. Um, but there's a three that he did, a series that he did I think it was three of them on gypsy picking and uh, rhythm guitar. Like it's, and they're like an hour and a half long each. And it's just this very scholarly, but app, you know, application based breakdown yeah. of how gypsy, you know, guitar playing works, you know, the different angles of the wrist and the pick and, you know, how a rest stroke works. And, you know, it, uh, it actually, um, I was hurt pretty badly a couple of years ago, broke both my arms and it, I had to relearn to, move my wrist and it, those things help me a lot change my picking uh approach i do a floating wrist now i used to do a, a more john mclaughlin kind of a close to the body thing mm -hmm. but now i do a floating wrist because it, it's just easier for me right. and it was very 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 helpful i highly recommend him a lot right, okay let's check it out I, I do know the dc music stuff i didn't recognize the name danny chang though yeah. i think I'm, i think i'm plugging a lot of stuff today so everybody who may or may not be watching this none of these are advertisements <laughs> but all good choices yes yeah. absolutely absolutely all right gentlemen um always a pleasure uh so next week Thanks is fun much. week i might send out a blues just to go back to simplicity um but let's finish over the rainbow and mary had a little lamb in whatever style you want funk punk latin fusion <laughs> stevie ray vaughn whatever you want to do let's just let's have some fun with it okay, okay cheers john thanks All very right. much mate take care cheers, thank you bye